happy. We are not afraid of regulation. This was the bold statement made by Gwen Shotwell, the woman leading the world's largest aerospace company when facing U.S. House officials, demonstrating her determination to seek justice for SpaceX in response to accusations of environmental regulation violations from government officials, specifically the FAA. How did Gwen Shotwell expose the bureaucratic entanglement surrounding the FAA's Starship launch license? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As the president and COO of SpaceX, Gwyn holds one of the most pivotal positions in the company, overseeing its day-to-day -day ops and ensuring the ambitious goals are met with precision and efficiency. Her responsibilities are vast, spanning across production, sales, mission management, customer relations, and finance. In essence, she manages the entirety of SpaceX's operational framework, ensuring all aspects of the company, from rocket launches to strategic partnerships, run smoothly and effectively. Shawwell's leadership is often credited with transforming Elon's visionary ideas into tangible operational successes. Whether it's managing the complexities of launching rockets or negotiating high-stakes contracts with organizations like NASA, her strategic decision-making has been instrumental in SpaceX's rapid growth and dominance in the aerospace industry. She navigates both technical challenges and financial constraints with equal expertise, ensuring that the company remains both innovative and sustainable. Under her stewardship, SpaceX has not only grown into a major player in space exploration, but has also redefined the way business is done in the industry making Shotwell a key driver behind its continued success. But while Shotwell's efforts previously took place quietly behind the scenes at SpaceX, we've recently seen her assertive decisiveness as legal tensions between SpaceX and government regulatory agencies have escalated. She's spoken out to defend SpaceX and their space programs against unfounded accusations. During a congressional hearing, Shotwell expressed her deep love for Texas, where SpaceX is building its massive rocket empire named Starbase. Texas, which I call my home office now. Since then, we've established state-of-the-art facilities, development tests and launch facilities. We've improved both in McGregor and we've developed these facilities down in Starbase at Boca Chica, Texas. Shawell also emphasized the importance of SpaceX's missions and the company's work in Texas, all which aim to advance humanity to new heights. We are paving the way for humanity to be truly spacefaring and a multi-planetary species. I know that might sound crazy. It sounded crazy to me when I joined the company over 20 years ago, but I really am committed to this. However, Shotwell expressed concerns that government bureaucracy is hindering progress, especially as SpaceX strives to continue launching its massive Starship from South Texas, expand its Starlink internet operations in Bastrop, and ensure engine testing at the McGregor site. Sure, we want to continue to enhance regulatory efficiency so that regulation does not hold back technology and innovation. This is not an issue for our competitors overseas. It is an issue in the United States, less so in Texas. Specifically, with Starship, Shotwell tactfully pointed out the delays in the FAA's approval process. Well, we can build a rocket and get it prepared for launch faster than we can get the uh, bureaucracy to approve us to, to, to launch. On top of that, SpaceX president emphasized the company's cooperation with various agencies to achieve Starship's launch and reassured that the company's always complied with the law and worked diligently to protect the public. The FAA's previous environmental allegations are complete nonsense. Ultimately, only by addressing these concerns can businesses thrive. As Shotwell stated, you'll probably enhance the regulatory environment, and there's just a lot of caution that you really want to make sure that regulation does not impede progress. Later on in the hearing, Gwynn brought up a previous incident where SpaceX was fined by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, we'll call them TCEQ for short, for operating their launch pad flood system without following the mandatory permitting process. This violation contributed to federal delays in approving the next Starship launch and stalled negotiations for the company's plan to launch and land spacecraft up to 25 times a year at Starbase. Along with federal penalties for violating the Clean Water Act at Starbase in South Texas and safety breaches during Florida launches, SpaceX has been fined a total of $785,000 in recent weeks. At Starbase, state and federal regulators fined the company for its high-pressure water deluge system, which sprays more than 100,000 gallons of water to reduce force, heat, and noise from the Starship engine during launch. Shotwell maintained that the system, which she said resembles an upside-down showerhead, was licensed and permitted by TCEQ. EPA, however, came in afterward and didn't like the license or the permit that we had for that and wanted to turn it into a federal permit, which we're working on right now. 
TCEQ fined the company for operating the system without proper permits and has not yet confirmed a new one for SpaceX. However, following Shotwell's testimony at the hearing, the legal situation for SpaceX appeared to improve significantly, illustrating the exceptional negotiation skills of the woman who's long stood behind billionaire Elon Musk. TCEQ said that SpaceX could use the launch pad water deluge system within the constraints of the enforcement order, even though the order is not yet finalized. SpaceX can currently use its deluge system if the provisions of the agreed order are complied with, the TCEQ spokesman said. The order requires SpaceX to monitor wastewater, which must stay within certain parameters, also requiring SpaceX to continue the process for the proper permit to operate the deluge system, which can take a year or more. The TCEQ enforcement order is still in the public comment phase and won't officially be in effect until it appears before TCEQ commissioners, who don't meet again until October 25th. The EPA's enforcement order is open for public comment till October 21st. So, is the deluge system safe for the environment? The deluge system, like a giant upside-down shower nozzle, sprays more than 100,000 gallons of chlorinated freshwater skyward during launches and tests. While much of it is captured in retention ponds or vaporized by the heat and combustion, EPA found each use of the system discharged between 34 and 45,000 gallons directly into the wetlands surrounding the launch site. Starship uses liquid methane and oxygen for fuel, burning cleaner than other more toxic rocket fuel. However, the deluge water is still considered industrial wastewater because it's exposed to heat and combustion. Fish and Wildlife Services estimated that during each launch, the system discharges 71,000 gallons of chlorinated water and as much as 190 pounds of metals like chromium, nickel, and iron from ablation of the launch pad infrastructure. Fish and Wildlife, in its environmental consultation with the FAA, determined that there were likely adverse effects of operating the deluge and detonation suppression system. The FAA stated that they received confirmation from TCEQ August 23rd and then from the EPA September 12th that they all consider SpaceX to be in compliance with environmental laws, acknowledging that the companies initiated the process from a Texas Pollution Discharge Elimination System permit, paid the civil fines, and agreed to comply with monitoring and reporting requirements. So, what does all that mean? At this point, we know that the companies resolved the environmental issues, leaving only that FAA permit, which is pending an investigation into changes in the Starship launch record. While awaiting the FAA's decision, SpaceX has continued to do tests and modifications on Super Heavy Booster 12 and Ship 30, all aimed at achieving the ability to catch the booster with the chopstick arms. However, unlike some traditional aerospace orgs that operate under cost-plus contracts where delays and cost overruns are common, New space companies like SpaceX are highly wary of bureaucracies. These regulations are often seen as barriers to growth and innovation. Elon recently expressed this frustration on X, saying, America's being smothered by even larger mountains of irrational regulations from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. As a leader in commercial spaceflight revolution, SpaceX is working at a breakneck pace, becoming the most active launch provider in the world. The company is not only launching astronauts, satellites, and cargo, but is also pushing the envelope of space exploration with the ultimate goal of getting to other planets. SpaceX has poured enormous resources into its flagship project, the Starship, and each test flight has achieved major milestones testing the limits of the system and proving to everyone its reliability. The fifth Starship flight test is poised to take things a step further with an ambitious attempt to return the Super Heavy booster to the launch site and then catch it in midair, a feat unprecedented in the history of spaceflight. This mission is a big stepping stone for NASA's Artemis program that aims to take astronauts back to the moon. NASA's chosen Starship is the human-rated lander lander for this Artemis mission, which will bring astronauts to the moon's south pole for the very first time. So for this reason, it is quite crucial that Starship is fully operational ASAP. These early test flights are vital in demonstrating the rocket's reliability and testing advanced technologies like in-space refueling, which are necessary for the Artemis lunar landings. On a broader scale, there's also the international race to consider. China plans to land their astronauts on the moon by 2030, and NASA's admin Bill Nelson has made it clear that U.S. astronauts need to be the first to return. Kevin Coleman, FAA's Associate Administrator for Space Transportation, recently echoed this sentiment in a discussion with lawmakers, emphasizing the importance to get back to the moon before China and reaffirmed the FAA's commitment to supporting the nation's space industry. However, the current regulatory framework is directly delaying Starship test flights, which could undermine U.S. national interests. 
It's clear that agencies like the FAA need to ensure that their regulations align with the government's national security and foreign policy priorities. The war of words between SpaceX and the FAA continues to escalate, and we've been talking about it a lot lately. However, what most have overlooked are SpaceX's game-changing solutions that could break Starship free from the suffocating chains of the FAA. So, what are these solutions, and how is it effective with SpaceX's Starship launch? As we know, Starship launch facilities currently operate at two locations, Texas and Florida. However, when Starship enters regular service, only one location will be likely selected as the primary base for Starship launches, while the other mainly serves as a testing ground for rocket components. Given what we've seen over the last year, the growth of Starbase facility in Texas is indisputable. Land areas have expanded, test facilities like Massey have gotten upgrades, offices in the Star Factory are getting built, and even a second launch tower at Starbase is being developed at a rapid pace. Additionally, the strong relationship between Texas leadership and SpaceX has grown closer, with both working together to boost the region's economy. Prime example is Congressman Troy E. Nels, a Texas rep who recently wrote to the FAA urging the agency to quickly allow Starship flights, even as the FAA increased pressure with environmental accusations to hinder SpaceX's progress. Now, looking at these developments, we see a shift in SpaceX's approach. Just two years back, Elon mentioned potentially moving Starship's ops to Kennedy Space Center in Florida. But now the expansion in Texas seems to be contradicting that earlier statement. However, while Starbase may seem to be developing smoothly as it sits in a land of vast potential, concerns about environmental impact have led local environmental groups to closely watch SpaceX. This scrutiny has made the goal of turning Starbase into the gateway to Mars a bit more difficult than before. The ongoing clash between SpaceX, Elon, and the FAA has been intense with no signs of compromise. And as we know, SpaceX is not known for its patience. Recall back in 22, during a public event, Elon warned that FAA delays could force Starship flights to happen outside of Texas. We do have the alternative of the Cape, Musk told the crowd, referring to Kennedy Space Center. We actually applied for environmental approval for launching from the Cape a few years ago, and we got it. To be honest, the delays caused by FAA are something that SpaceX could tolerate. But the fact that they're being slow because of unnecessary environmental reviews, issuing even false reports due to half-hearted investigations, or putting overly high demands on a product that's still in development like Starship, this is something that none of us, not even us regular Joes, can accept from the government agency, right? Hey, if you feel that way, please type a yes down there in the comments. That being said, if the excessive obstruction by an environmental agency continues, the development of Starship, planned to fully explode by next decade, could get delayed by another 10 years. We have to ask, what can SpaceX do to save this situation? We do not discuss the potential political factors that might affect how these space agencies are managed, such as Donald Trump getting reelected as president and Elon being handed a big position as promised. Instead, we're going to talk about the proactive solutions that SpaceX could implement to facilitate the upgrades to the Starship program, no matter how closely FAA monitors. First of all, a familiar option for SpaceX is to do more Starship launches in Florida. As we can see, the FAA still oversees SpaceX's launches in Florida, such as the two Falcon 9 issues back in July when the FAA stopped all subsequent launches to investigate. However, the suspension period for launches isn't too long, besides the fact SpaceX quickly identified the root cause of the issue. The regular Falcon 9 launches from the launch complex SpaceX's lease from NASA also play a role in speeding up the FAA's investigation process, allowing SpaceX to resume their flights sooner. With the backing of NASA, if Starship were moved to Florida and started executing launches for NASA's missions there, dealing with the FAA would certainly be smoother, to say the least. SpaceX has already considered this option, but it wasn't until earlier this year that they started accelerating work at this site. SpaceX had planned to build two more launch towers in Florida, and earlier this year, we got significant news SpaceX had applied for permission to launch 120 Starship missions in Florida. That's 44 launches annually from Kennedy Space Center and 76 at SL-37, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. But moving to Florida does have its own problems, including rivalry from the competition. If you grow too fast and get global recognition, it's easy to get haters because they think that you've stolen their spotlight. And that's true for SpaceX, too. In Florida, two long-standing rivals, Blue Origin and ULA, have filed objections to SpaceX's launch application, requesting that SpaceX cut their number of launches and compensate for potential damages that Starship launches might cause. Well, that's pretty shady, but for companies like Blue Origin and ULA, at least they're managing to slow SpaceX down a bit. Besides launching Starship in Florida, SpaceX could also explore launching at sea. 
One of the primary advantages lies in the realm of safety, where impact on both people and infrastructure is minimized. Launching powerful rockets in the middle of the ocean reduces the risks associated with unexpected incidents. The vast expanse of the ocean gives a buffer zone, shielding populated areas from dangers and ensuring the safety of both the launch ops and surrounding communities. Beyond just safety, environmental benefits of an ocean launch platform are pretty significant. Launching from the ocean mitigates or eliminates several factors that can adversely affect the environment and ecosystems. The absence of factors like sound, dust, smoke, debris that are inherent in land-based options contributes to a cleaner and less disruptive launch process. This not only protects the delicate balance of ecosystems, but also minimizes the ecological footprint associated with space exploration activities. Not only is SpaceX aiming for this, but lately there have been several companies in the same field that have seen the same potential of sea launch platforms. Tom Morota, founder and CEO of Spaceport, talked about this during a panel at the Spacecom conference last year. What we're really doing is building a new type of spaceport, he said. We're building a high-cadence responsive spaceport to solve the problem of spaceport congestion. Growing activity at Cape Canaveral is threatening to cause problems for launch companies as the pace of activity stresses infrastructure there. It's scalable, Moroda said of the sea-based approach. It's a lot easier to build more ships to meet more launch demand than it is to go find 100 acres off the coast somewhere. Unlike ground-based commercial sites, spaceport companies' sea-based platforms do not need FAA spaceport license, known as Part 420. It comes down to how we define a spaceport, which is a fixed location on Earth. And his move, said Pam Underwood, director of FAA's Office of Spaceports. Well, considering the current developments of Starship and the FAA, should SpaceX immediately opt for an offshore launch platform to do their Starship launches? That could be a great intention down the road. The final option for SpaceX to escape the grips of the FAA, as many of you have commented on in our recent videos, is that SpaceX could launch Starship from a country outside the U.S. But the thing is, SpaceX can't relocate away from the states because of the ITARS regulation that would prohibit them from exporting their rocket technology. Back in the 60s, the U.S. alone had the technology to adjust the thrust of a rocket. For the rockets, if your guidance system could adjust the thrust, then you'd have much greater control over accuracy. Issues like that were at the forefront of concern during the Cold War years, and the technology to prevent that technology from falling into the wrong hands was significant. Starship's platform has largely discussed in public media and presented on numerous occasions. It has some powerful rocket motors it uses in large quantities, and it almost certainly has the technology that could fall into ITAR's jurisdiction. And the same goes for the remaining debris of B-11, including a third of the super heavy engine. This is one part we don't want to fall into the hands of unauthorized individuals who could analyze and study it. This is for SpaceX to salvage B-11. But what about B-10? Why didn't SpaceX recover that one? The reason lies in the depth of the locations where B-11 and B-10 fell. B-11 fell at a depth of about 61 meters underwater in shallow and easily accessible waters. B-11 is likely to spread within a radius of about 200 meters, making the search and recovery relatively easy. Once a part's found, finding the rest of the pieces can happen pretty quickly. In contrast, B-10 fell at a depth of 800 meters in deep water, beyond the reach of most conventional diving equipment. The depth's over 500 meters beyond the usual limits of standard diving tools. Debris field of B-10s likely spread over a much bigger radius, and recovering B-10 is a bit more challenging and needs some specialized equipment. To locate B-10's debris, a thorough scan and mapping of the seabed would need to be conducted. After all, we can see that it's not easy for Starship to launch outside the U.S., and launching in Florida or even at sea would still be a favorable option to avoid the pesky grip of the FAA. However, what would be even better is that if the FAA and some of these other environmental agencies just actively improve themselves to create better working conditions for SpaceX's development. This would represent truly sustainable progress through cooperation between government agencies and private organizations. After all, we're all on the same team, right?